I was trying to figure out how to crack YouTube's algorithm so I could go viral. Ah uh, yes, Skype and Twitter. And then I had an idea. Why are all the metal ones holy? Ooh. This idea was going to need glue. Choose your sticky. And more plumbing parts than I could shake an electrician at. I think I'd be used to the plumbing section by now, but... <laughs> Just be warned, this video was definitely not done by a professional, but here we go. If you're a gold prospector like me, you're probably broke, just like me, and buying expensive fancy tools to clean your gold up is very cost prohibitive. The problem with gold prospecting is that you collect concentrates, and concentrates are heavy things that sit with your gold. It's really hard to separate concentrates from gold. A miller table, just like this one, is going to cost you 250 Australian doll hairs. And I mean, it's basically a flat board that allows smooth water to go on it. We can do better. And so from the creators of the Mega Sluice and the Low Banker, we bring to you a bloody mess, but this will make sense soon. Today we're going to make our very own miller table. And I'm going to make it in such a way that it'll have interchangeable matting in it. Oh, that's right. We're going to add dream matting to the bottom. You know, the batting everyone loves with a pair of boobies for a logo. Just in case you're running different types of soil that aren't meant to go through miller tables, which is what I do every time I use mine. I already have all the pumps and batteries and everything else that we would be using them. Weird flex, Chris. Weird flex. But you can pick up an aquarium pump for really cheap and run it off a 12 volt source. Today I'm using an invoice tray to make our miller table. Normally these things are used for housing bills, which is a sub-optimal kind of use for them, I feel. So that's our box built. So because this is made in China, we're actually going to add a piece of aluminium stripping across the back and the front of our box. That'll be clear in a minute why. Just got to draw a really straight line. Perfect. And for the first time ever on Vogus Prospecting, we're getting rid of the safety squint in place for some real safety glasses. Uh, the link for my t-shirt is in the description below if you want to get a safety squint shirt. It'll keep you safe. All right, Dremel on. That's almost a clean cut. That's impressive by my standards. <laughs> now, for the sake of trying to make myself look like I know what I'm doing, we're just gonna rough this surface up a little bit. Yeah, I know. I totally could have removed that sticker. But you know what? It doesn't matter. And... And we're going to do exactly the same for the aluminium. Now the reason we're roughing this up is because I'm actually going to glue those pieces of aluminium to this piece of plastic. And the reason I'm doing that is because I could not find a tray that was made from metal that didn't have perforated sides. And put simply, I just don't want to crack this trying to drill holes into it. I'm sure it would be fine, but I'm going for the most simple method I can think of so other people can build this without very many hand tools. These are gonna be our adjustable legs. So I gotta drill a couple of holes either side so that we can put them through. There are a million ways to skin a cat, as the old saying, and what I'm doing is definitely not the only method of building a box like this, it's just the one I chose. A miller table works best when you adjust the pitch of that table so that the black sand moves and the gold stays behind. It works exactly like a sluice box in that way, except there are no safety ripples in here. Meaning that if you don't have a way of systematically adjusting this little bit by little bit, you'll end up having to use suboptimal ways of tilting it and you may over or undershoot the angle you actually need. What I've done is I've drilled holes in this aluminium so when you sit the bolt in it like this and we have a second nut up here, we can screw the leg down and up just using those bolts. If you had a tap set, which I do, but I don't want to use because of simplicity's sake, you could just tap that hole and then screw the bolt manually. This is something that has like red on it and it says industrial strength. It's glue. I reckon this will work just perfectly. It says apply a thin coat to both surfaces. So we're just going to go with the old zigzag method. Glue cam, glue cam. That was definitely not a zigzag. We got 15 minutes of waiting, which means we can move on to becoming plumbers. Conveniently for me, I've got a second tray. Now I've just gone to Bunnings and bought a whole bunch of plumbing parts to make this weird contraption. And you could obviously just drill a hole in the side and slip a piece of PVC through and it'll work perfect. But for the sake of making things difficult. Right, I need another straight line. So this is not like an exact science. 
he says about a thing which is an exact science, which is called mathematics and geometry. I think I need to cut it about there. All right, Dremel, let's see if you can cut PVC. Who would have guessed a hardened spinning disc traveling at 11,000 RPM actually managed to cut its way through PVC quite easily? All right, rough test fit. Oh, like a glove. I want an even sheet of water. And just where do you buy an even sheet of water, Chris? The even sheet of water store? To be coming off the end of this miller table. The way that you would normally do that would be to put a dam in here, some kind of blocker, then a piece of miner's moss on the bed, and you'd fill that dam section up with water and that water would come out through the miner's moss even. And I can still do that very easily by simply removing this spray bar and leaving the open end of this discharging into a dam section that I can build here. But I've been watching way too much Gold Rush and watching them use shaker tables with slow drip systems. So I'm gonna add a bunch of small holes to this and I'm hoping that those small holes will allow for an even coating of water. That's the theory. Let's see if it works. We can always add more holes or change this system around, but we're gonna see if this works first. We know that fits in, and that should give me a very nice even flow of water across this whole bed. Now, here's the thing. A miller table is about separating gold from the heavy black sands, whereas a sluice box in the creek is about separating the heavy dense material from the gravels and the lighter stuff in a creek. So we can't use aggressive riffling and matting like that. A lot of people just put chalkboard paint on the bed of their mill of tables and it works really well. But I want to be able to put a section of dream mat at the end of the miller table and I want the ability to interchange mats if I need to. Enter. A cutting mat. A cutting mat has the exact texture you're looking for because it's non-slip and it's very durable. So we're gonna cut a cutting mat. I haven't worked out how I'm gonna cut the cutting mat yet, but we'll get to that. To fit across the bed like this. Now, originally I was trying to find one that fit in the tray, but I've got too much wiggle room either side and the next step up from this was too big. So it was easy just to buy a small one that'll fit up the top and leave me space my dream mat down the bottom. It says do this until it's tack dry. That is tack dry. Here we go. I've got a level there. It said add precisely, but <laughs> precision's my middle name. Oh, now I know why it says add precisely because clearly that's an instant bond. Obviously my mat is something that I need to be precision fit. So I shall have to actually measure this out correctly. Is there lines that go to the edge on this side? There is not. Hmm. Okay, well. So I've got a cutting mat. I'm gonna put my cutting mat on that cutting mat with something that can use a straight edge and a Stanley knife. To answer the age old question, can you cut a cutting mat in half? I was soon to find out that even though I had a sharp Stanley knife, a reasonable amount of man muscle, and a semi-impressive beard, this would prove to be a very difficult You know task. what, I've used a Dremel for every other thing, so why not cutting mats? Just sandpapered that edge back a little bit and now we have a snug as a glove fit. Even though this is friction fit and it fits very well, I need to drill a hole through both this and this for our collection container. This has to sit underneath so I can sweep my clean gold into it as I work. Now that I've got a rough mock-up of where everything is going to go, I think I'm gonna add my hole right here. I know people are really gonna question this move, but look, it is so cheap to make this. The most expensive part of this entire build was that mat and it cost $12. So it's not like we're gonna make a mistake here that's irreparable. While the mat dries, we're gonna pre-drill the hole to the lid for the collection container and we're gonna get it almost 90% center. Now we're going to take that same drill and we're going to really try not to stuff up the mat too bad. Here we go. So far so good. Perfect. Even more glue just for a uh, really good measure. While I wait one eternity for that to dry later, the problem I have is that the dream mat is too small and I really, really want to use it. 2,000 years later. Try and line the holes up to be kind of accurately positioned. Cause otherwise there's a lip and all the gold gets caught on it. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. 
Anyway, I realized that this is going to be a replaceable mat section and I have V matting, which is not dream mat, but it works really well. So these are our feet. Well, I am almost there. We've got all the feet on, we've got the hole drilled, we've got the spray bar set up. It's basically time. Shall we make everything wet? For all intents and purposes, this could go tits up really quickly. Within a couple of seconds of turning it on, I realized we had a few issues that I had to address. First things first, we're not level, so we're just going to make it level. Don't forget to bring a towel. Oh, there was a few teething issues, but I've sorted them. I had to drill two extra holes through this end cap to meet up with that pipe to get proper water distribution over this edge. And the same thing for this end cap on this edge. And the water was wrapping around and following the tray back. So I added a shear sheet, which is nothing more than a piece of folded aluminium. Now the water's following that down. And since then, the piece of folded aluminium foil has been replaced by a right angle piece of aluminium permanently. This also offers a way to lock the V matting in at the bottom. These are concentrates from my low banker there. First spoon going on, let's just see what happens. I mean, the worst case scenario is I'm getting all my gold back out of the tub, right? The other thing I changed was getting rid of that piece of aluminium separating the spray bar from the main table. Well, it looks like it's working like a miller table. It was unnecessary and I didn't need it. The gold seems to be staying where it's meant to be staying and the black sand is shedding off. I'll make some adjustments to the pitch and angle and then we can increase water flow, which will help the V-mat, but the angle won't be so steep that it rolls the gold away. I think that's where we need to be at. And that there is my first ever recovered gold on this miller table. Look at how fine that gold is. It did a really good job. This is definitely the best part. At any rate, homemade miller table. It works.